let's take a look at how to add and subtract mixed customary units. Six quarts and zero pints plus three quarts and zero pints is equal to how many quarts and how many pints? Okay, well, when we have different customary units, in this case, some are in quarts and some are in pints, you wanna write these as all the same thing, right? We need to have our units match or be the same in order to add or subtract those numbers. But in this case, if I have six quarts and zero pints, that's the same thing as saying I have just six quarts. If I have three quarts and zero pints, that's the same thing as saying I just have three quarts. Okay, so all I really have here is quarts. Six quarts plus three quarts would give me nine quarts. And since I didn't have any pints at all, right, zero pints plus zero pints, that means I would have zero pints in my answer. So this would just be nine quarts and zero pints, which is the same thing as saying just nine quarts. In this question, four gallons and two quarts plus five gallons and zero quarts equals how many gallons and how many quarts? Okay, well one way to do this problem would be to convert them all to the same thing at the start. Another way to do this problem is to just combine gallons with gallons and quarts with quarts. Okay, and I, I'm gonna do that this way because I only had two quarts and zero quarts, so I think that's gonna be the easier way to do this problem. Okay, so if I had four gallons and I added five gallons to it, how many gallons do I wind up with? Now notice I'm just looking at the gallons right now, I'm ignoring the quarts. Okay, so four gallons plus five gallons would give me nine gallons. Okay, now I wanna ignore the gallons and look at just the quarts. I had two quarts, I added zero quarts to it, so how many quarts am I left with? Well, two plus zero would leave me with two quarts. So I would have nine gallons and two quarts all together. And again, just notice we added gallons with gallons and we added quarts with quarts. Okay, subtract how many pints and how many fluid ounces minus one, one pint and one fluid ounce would be equal to two pints and one fluid ounce. Okay, well let's look at just the pints. How many pints minus one would equal two? Well, what number minus one gives us two? Okay, well you might be able to do that off the top of your head and say three minus one would give me with two, would give me two. Now, if you weren't sure, you could work backwards. You could say, if I wound up with two after I subtracted, well, before I subtracted, it would have been one bigger, and two plus one gives me three. Okay, so either way, we wind up with three pints. Now, let's take a look at our fluid ounces. I had some number of fluid ounces. I subtracted one fluid ounce, and I'm left with one fluid ounce. Well, what number minus one leaves me with one? And again, you might be able to say off the top of your head, two minus one gives me one. If you weren't sure, you could work backwards and say, well, if I wound up with one, before I subtracted, it would have, before I subtracted one, it would have been one bigger, so one plus one gives us two. Okay, and again, you can always double check it, right? Three pints minus one pint gives us two pints. That works, two fluid ounces, Minus one fluid ounce gives us one fluid ounce. So that works as well. Okay, we wanna evaluate two pints and seven fluid ounces plus blank pints and blank fluid ounces gives us eight pints and two fluid ounces. Now this one is a little tricky and here's why. We're gonna combine just like we did in the last problems. We wanna put pints with pints to give us pints and we wanna put fluid ounces with fluid ounces to give us fluid ounces. But I'm adding. So if I'm adding seven and some number of fluid ounces, we would expect to get something bigger than seven. If I only got two, it meant that the number of fluid ounces brought us into the next pint, and then I'm only left with two more fluid ounces. 
So it might be helpful for us to think here for a second, how many fluid ounces are in a pint? Okay, so we need to know our conversion that one pint is equal to 16 fluid ounces. Okay, so when we go back here for just a second, if I had seven fluid ounces and I add something to it, it's not possible to add a negative number of ounces, right? If you're adding ounces, our assumption is you have to add a positive amount of liquid. So if we have seven fluid ounces and we're adding a positive amount onto it, if we got two, it means that we brought the pints up to the next number and then had another two left over. So since we said a second ago that one pint was equal to 16 fluid ounces, right? One pint is equal to 16 fluid ounces. Well, if it came up to be the next number of pints with two fluid ounces left over, that means we must have gotten 18 fluid ounces. Now, why am I saying 18? Well, 16 would have been equal to a pint. That would have brought it over. And then we got two more than that, which would make it 18. Okay, well, in order to get 18 fluid ounces as my answer, what would I have to add to seven? Seven plus what gives me 18? You might know off the top of your head, or you could work backwards and say, well, if I wound up with 18, well, before I added the seven, well, let's subtract the seven, that would have left me 11. So it must have been 11 fluid ounces. Okay, so remember, we're saying here, seven fluid ounces plus 11 fluid ounces would give us 18, which makes it essentially one pint, right? 16 of those become one pint, and then the other two are left over to be two fluid ounces. So one of these pints came over from the fluid ounces. So the pints part would have just given me seven. So when I look at my pints, I'm gonna say, okay, two pints plus what number of pints would give me seven? Well, two plus what gives us seven? Five does. Okay, well, since this one was a little bit complicated here, let's check it out, let's check our work. So we're basically saying two pints and seven fluid ounces plus five pints and 11 fluid ounces would give us eight pints and two fluid ounces as our answer. Okay, well, if we add together our pints with our pints, we would say two pints plus five pints equals seven pints. When we add our fluid ounces, we'd say seven fluid ounces plus 11 fluid ounces. Well, seven plus 11 would give me 18 fluid ounces. Okay, and you would never say 18 fluid ounces because every time you get to 16 fluid ounces, that becomes another pint. So this 18 fluid ounces is essentially one pint, right? That's 16 of them. And then you still have another two fluid ounces left over. So that seven pints and the one pint, two fluid ounces all together makes the eight pints and two fluid ounces. So this checks out. Six feet, nine inches, plus some number of feet and some number of inches gives us seven feet and eight inches as our answer. Okay, now this is a lot like the last problem because you're not gonna add negative inches, right? How are you gonna have a negative measurement? That doesn't make sense. So we'd have to have numbers that are zero or bigger. So here, if I had nine inches, I add some positive number or zero number of inches, and I get eight inches as my answer, that doesn't make sense, except that when I get to a certain number of inches, it becomes the next foot. So remember, our conversion from inches to feet is that every 12 inches, 
is equal to one foot. So if I get to 12, I'm gonna call that a foot, right? If I had 13 inches, I would call it one foot and one inch. So here, if I already had nine, I added something and my answer is eight, I know that that brought it up to the next foot. So this was six feet before that happened. Okay, so let's see what that means for us. That means that we would have gotten 12 inches to make it the next foot plus the eight inches. Okay, well 12 plus eight would give us 20. So another way to look at this is to say that we got 20 inches. Okay, well nine inches plus what gives me 20? You might know off the top of your head, or you could work backwards and subtract and say 20 minus nine, that leaves me with 11. Okay, so it must have been 11 inches. Okay, well in this case, six feet plus what now remember we said one of those feet came from being over 12 inches and rounding it and becoming the next foot right so here from the feet part added together whatever the six feet i started with plus whatever this gave me must have given me six feet before the extra inches added it up to one more to become seven well six plus what gives me six that had to be zero feet Okay, and again, when it's a little complicated like this, you might wanna just take a second to check it and say, does my answer make sense? Well, if I add the feet, right? Six feet plus zero feet, that works out and gives me six feet so far. Remember we said it was six before the inches one brought it up. And we're gonna see that part in just a second. When I add my inches, I'm gonna say nine inches plus 11 inches, okay, well nine plus 11 gives me 20 inches. And you would never call that six feet 20 inches because an inch is only 12, I'm sorry, a foot is only 12 inches. So every time you get to 12 inches, you would make that the next foot. So another way to say this is one foot, right, that accounts for 12 of, this in, of these inches. Well, how many more is 20 than 12? 20 minus 12 leaves me with the other eight inches. Okay, well, if I have six feet and another one foot eight inches, that gives me seven feet and eight inches. So this checks out. 